Hello everyone, uh, sorry not to be able to be with you uh, today, but um, uh, I've been asked to talk to you about STEM education. Uh, I think that STEM is, as you know, very important. Uh, there is a big need uh, in society, uh, and yet it's not so easy to motivate children, to motivate uh, even uh, young uh, graduates to, to go into these professions. And, um, and yet they are very important, they are shaping our world. I mean, we all know this. Um, so what we don't always know is that uh, in fact we are all born scientists. So children when they are born uh, are born with an ability to observe the world, to experiment with the world, to uh, make mistakes, to learn from their mistakes and to revise their hypotheses and to be very proud and wanting to share what they found when they achieve something. So those are the basic uh, way the scientists work. So you could say children are little scientists or you could say scientists are you know grown-up uh, children but in both cases uh, we have to consider what can we do to help develop these innate abilities and uh, foster them. The, the peak of questioning for instance is at age four. Uh, so what can we do from age four on to nurture that will to question the world, to experiment with the world and um, how can we bring methodologies of science to uh, help children to go from this kids questioning to a scientific questioning. So that's uh, typically what we've done in the French program called Les Aventuriers that is uh, currently uh, being uh, proposed as a stand uh, in your meeting. So you may want to go and discuss with the team that is uh, carrying this project that we've uh, launched in France a few years ago now and is uh, progressively spreading throughout the world. So we all know that with uh, the development of artificial intelligence and robotics, many of the current jobs uh, will be displaced and uh, some of them will have to be created. Um, but we don't know which jobs uh, are going to be created, for instance. Uh, so how can we prepare children for tomorrow's job when we don't know what those jobs will be? So what we do know is that um, many problems still are present uh, in the world and inviting children to question the world and find solutions might be the best way to not only develop meta competence and meta skills that such as cooperation and critical thinking and creativity and the ability to to cooperate and to communicate and, and do things together that they cannot do alone uh, we can also invite them to progressively invent uh, the future including their own jobs and so my, my bet is that, uh, of course, science and technology are, are part of the future and we want the children to understand that by understanding science and technology, they can uh, contribute to build uh, tomorrow's future. But uh, in order to be as um, open as possible to everyone, including, for instance, uh, girls that are not the most motivated sometimes by, by STEM, uh, if we tell them that, you know, they, they also very often have a lot of empathy and a lot of interest for nature, for health, for, for others' uh, well-being. And by telling them that um, by starting from uh, their ability to empathize with the world, by uh, their ability to see problems and uh, they can start looking for solutions, and that STEM becomes a mean. It's a mean to, for personal development, it's a mean to solve the world's issue. And I think that's uh, by doing this, we can integrate many more uh, children and develop their interest for, for science and technology and engineering and mathematics, because those uh, core disciplines uh, will be uh, shaping the future, but they will be shaping the future uh, in ethical ways only if we also invite the children and the future scientists to integrate this ethical dimension. So I think we, we should definitely uh, invite uh, the children to reflect on, on the ethical dimensions of science because, um, you know, Aristotle, for instance, uh, many, many years ago was already saying that it was three forms of knowledge, episteme, which gave science, Techne, which gave technology, and phronesis, which many people have forgotten, which is the ethics of action. And of course, we've developed science and technology since Aristotle, but not so much the ethics dimension. And so I think that inviting children to understand the ethical dimension and to and the cross relationship between science, technology, and ethics, uh, between episteme, techne, and phronesis, is absolutely crucial for them as uh, individual, but also for our collective well-being and our future. The best way for the teachers uh, to be trained is actually for the teachers or the future teachers to experiment these things by themselves and uh, 
question themselves. And the same way children are born scientists, teachers were also born scientists. And, uh, and so the, the teachers can certainly experiment uh, and can inv invite the children to experiment with them on uh, these various topics and that's probably the best way that you know the schools can also evolve because you know the best schools are typically schools where uh, there is a, an attitude of uh, self-reflection on you know what can be done what sort of experiments can be tried to help children uh, progress and so if the the teachers is is uh, developing uh, these scientific uh, dimensions uh, this ability to question their practice and you know uh, observe what others uh, have done so the the teachers can also contribute to this learning society by learning from one another and, and sharing their innovations and then they can um, do this and offer this to the next generation. Thanks for your attention and uh, I'll be happy to answer questions uh, maybe through Twitter or please uh, go and visit the Saventurier uh, stand and, and discuss with them. Bye.